Well, welcome back, my friends, to another, yeah, another one, rousing rendition of Choir Boys Outdoors, a Topps Knives Sneaky Pete rendition. I'm a monster fan of Topps. I really, really am. I, I just, I'm a big fan of what they do. I always have been. I have 10 or 12 of their knives. I'm always interested in adding more. And I got to send out a huge thank you to Keith Carpenter. Keith sent this for me to review. And he's been a patient, patient man. He sent this and the Tundra Trekker. Uh, and then he sent he sent me a Nesmic to keep. But I'm going to send this one and the Tundra Trekker back. But I'm a Monster Tops fan. Always have been. Always will be. They're consistent. Their quality is consistent. I just enjoy their knives. They make a lot of different stuff, a lot of diverse stuff, which I like. And I've got a little bit of everything. I need to do what I need to do is just have one solid weekend and nothing but tops, reviews, and shorts. I've got enough to do that. And Donnie, be all day, has sent me the Prather War buoy and another one, another tops that I'm excited about doing. So, having said all that, guys, there was a time in this country where 22 veterans a day took their own lives. And the stats are everywhere. That... It, it's aggravating at times. That's why here we focus on the number zero. Anything over zero is simply unacceptable. Vets, we love you. You have a place here. That's all that means, man. You're welcome here. And that's it. We're not a charity. We don't try to be. We don't try to be deceptive. You just, you're welcome here. We back to blue over here. We support Lil all to the chagrin of many. And that's okay. People disagree. I understand it. I have my reasons. How do you do that, Scab? Well, we don't break the damn law as much as possible. I have before, and if we do, you know, we accept responsibility, but try not to. Finally, if you're an addict, never quit quitting. So here's the deal. The Sneaky Pete, now, the designer, it said it was designed by the Tops team. So I don't know if this was a joint uh, design by those guys over there. I absolutely love them. And let me just say this. Joe, my brother Joe from JS Bladecraft, check him out. But Joe, my partner on Blade Talk, is working his ass off to get Leo on an episode of Blade Talk. I think it has to happen. It must happen. I'd love to have him on the show before Blade Show. Love to talk to him. But we are working on that. Joe is working on that diligently. And my brother, thank you for all your hard work. And anybody that knows Tops, y'all send him an email, tell him to get his butt on the show. We got a lot to talk about. Now, let's focus on the Sneaky Pete. I love the name. It's called Sneaky Pete. Uh, it's one eighth inch blade stock. You see the old man pinch grip there? That's the old bar grip that used to get the shit cut out of you. Um, at, at mastered by many old men all over the world. But it's one eighth inch thick. Now, if you noticed at the front, I showed you the sheath. I love the sheath. It's a Kydex sheath, but it has one of the twisty things on it, the twisty belt thing where you can go scout carry, you can carry it regular. I carry it in my pocket. I think for me, that's the most conducive way to do it, convenient way to do it. But this thing, you can slide in and out. If you carry it, scout carry and wear a t-shirt like I got on there, nobody would ever know. It's thin blade stock, but it's really well done. It's 1095. It's got that top heat treat on it. It comes razor sharp. It's got a slight recurve. We've got some light jimping on the black back. It's black canvas micarta. Let me give you some specs, and then we can move on. The overall length is 8 inches. The blade length is 3.63 inches. The cutting edge is 3.5 inches. The blade finish is an acid rain. I have several in that blade finish, and I am a fan of it. The blade width at its widest point is an inch and one sixteenth. The handle scales are black canvas micarta. We have some yellow liners that really, really set that off. The handle length is 4 and 5 16 inches long. The inner grip, which is oh so important, it really is, is 4 and 1 8 inches, meaning most hands across the world will be able to grip it and hold it. The weight of the knife itself is 4.3 ounces, very light knife but you have the strength of that fixed blade that's always important to remember 4.3 ounces with the sheath at 6.7 so overall it doesn't add a lot i think you'll be happier regardless. the balance point here now watch this a lot of times you'll see it's hard to find it is not hard to find the balance point on this knife you can move it all around 
very maneuverable. It does have a lanyard hole. It has some uh, jimping on the inside of the handle. So when you take that stabby grip, you've got some grip there. We've got a ramp on the back. It's got a sharpening choil. It is a clip point. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that I am a clip point freak. And with, along with that recurve, makes it super, say it with me kids, dope. Now, everything that we needed to do, we did at the stump. We cut all kinds of stuff. And here's the thing. I get this a lot. Well, Scab, you, a lot of times your cutting's redundant. When If it's sharp, it's sharp. That's true. But we also use all kind of different mediums. Why? Because we need all kind of different hand grips. Is there any Is there any hot spots in the handle? Is there any slippage in the handle? Does the edge hold up? Because a lot of the stuff we cut is still belted. A lot of the stuff we stab, still belted tires. Does the heat treat hold up? Now, a couple questions I get asked, is it easy to sharpen in the field? Well, it's 1095 high carbon steel, yes. Most of, not all, but most of Top's edges, I read somewhere where Leo had said one time, most of them are 25 degrees per side. That's a pretty easy blade edge to maintain. You can thin it out. This one might be a little steeper. This one might be a 20. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to say that as a blanket statement. I'm just telling you what I read. Now, on the, the uh, blade itself, just a little bit of billboarding. We got Sneaky Pete. Under that, we have Y-154, the TOPS logo. On the other side, the part that I love the most, made in the USA. You can see the thinness there. That's quarter-inch sidewall attire. Now, this was made, and it is it, a lot of law enforcement, a lot of military, uh, a lot of tactical guys carry this knife. I say this a lot joking, okay? But the truth is, it the, we can't really show a lot on the self-defense of it, okay? One... I don't pretend to be something I'm not, never have, never will. It, it doesn't do me any good to do so, right? I've been stabbed. That doesn't make me an expert in it. It just makes me a little slow. But what I can show you is the utility of the knife, and then you translate it over. Now, here we're doing the John Peter stab test. So this is a little bit of a more tactical thing. Very, very comfortable stabber, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, we don't have hot spots. The, the pommel, and it's not a pommel, but you know what I'm talking about. That area is slanted, and it fits your thumb perfectly, right? So when we're stabbing, there's no slip. You've got a great grip. I love that black canvas micarta there. And you'll notice again, and I mention this every video, uh, we just do six to eight inch punches. Why? I can take a butter knife and run it through that stump, if I, but that doesn't show you the knife. So right here, watch, boop. I think we got three or four pieces. Let me let me explain this to you, okay? Simple math. Three or four pieces of quarter inch sidewall steel belted, and you see the steel belting there. Sidewall of the tire. If it'll go through that on a six or eight inch uh, quick punch, it'll do what you need it to do. I promise you that. When we cut the, uh, when, we, when you see me cut like the, um, shit, the toe strap, the ratchet strap, uh, that you can translate that over to maybe skinning, caping, something like that, or it's able to cut a seat belt. Now here, I like doing this test a lot, the zip tie test. I cut zip ties two, three times a week at work. I really do. It's not about the sharpness of the knife here. We're testing the edge here. We're putting pressure. So, I mean, think about it. We're, we're putting the edge of the knife there and then we're twisting. Does it hold up? Yep. No chips, no rolls. Now watch here. Pop. This is just some electrical wire, uh, three or four strand. It strips it very, very easily, which is nice. That nice, thin edge. The edge geometry is right on point. I personally have never had a problem uh, with the edges on tops. I can only speak to what I've reviewed. I can only speak to what's in my hand, and that's what we do. If you're new here, we don't make big, huge, sweeping blanket statements. Uh, we don't indict companies because somebody across the world did something stupid with a knife and it broke. That's not what we do here. Okay, we test what's in our hand. The other thing is this. I'm not trying to judge anybody for how they test the knife. That Please don't take that out of context. What I'm saying to you is we base our results on what we do. 
All I can do is give you my opinion on a limited skill set of what I think of the knife. Would I carry this knife? Yeah, shit yeah. I love tops, one, two. I love the ease of carry. And again, we only deal with choir boys outdoors. Now watch these nice thin little strips here. You can get some really, really, really fine feathers sticking in there. Now, this is a piece of that sweet Canadian bacon. That light or not, fat wood, whatever you want to call it. So that adds a different dimension to this. But right there, son, you can peel that off and you can see right there, this, this thing is a slicer's dream. That recurve, you put it right in that recurve. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a recurve. To me, a recurve makes cutting a little bit easier. And then I get, well, Scab, how do you sharpen it? Well, if it's maintaining, I'll just use a work sharp and freehand it some, right? And, and, and I've, been, I've been quite honest about this. If I need something repurposed or redone, it goes to DJ Horn. As far as maintenance goes, I keep my knife stropped and I freehand on my work sharp using the polishing belt. Or I'll use one of those uh, little Lansky pucks just for a quick touch up. But that's how I do that. Now, right here, you, you, we seen, you've seen us do some different things, some different batoning. Again, we're not going to do much in the way of like stabbing and jabbing. As the channel grows and as we build and as we move more and more and more towards doing this on the regular and we bring in different mediums, different folks to demonstrate. Now, if we can do different parts of the knife, right? We can do some self-defense. We can bring in people for that or use test dummies. But for now, we're focusing on the utility aspect. Hell of a knife, I, and it's strong. To be one eighth inch thick, full tang, dude, it's just, I've carried it to work a couple days too. So what you're seeing here, it came in with Keith's Edge on it, right? I've had it forever, but I've carried it quite a bit because I love the damn thing. The edge is held up. Now, during this review, we got on it pretty quick. We cut a ton of stuff. Again, when you see a 14 or 15 minute video, is usually two or three hours of stuff in there. And a lot of times my dumb ass has shot one thing two or three times because I've left the camera off. And there, there's a little punji stick that I like to make for the neighborhood kids that throw at each other. It's just part of big community building. Plus, I like for our kids to know how to build a weapon. Now here, uh, this is the new test. This is called the scabs throwing the knife at the cardboard test. Pretty good little balance on it. I love this knife. I'm telling you right now, I love this knife. It's right there uh, to me with the Silent Hero 4, and I adore that knife. Now, y'all watch. Right on target, son. I wish I'd made it stick. That would have been a little better for dramatic effect, but it's right there with the Silent Hero 4 for me, and I love that knife. The thing I like about this knife is the versatility of it. You can build a fire with it. You can throw it at cardboard. You can slash cardboard. You can cut all kind of things. You can baton. There's a ton of stuff you can do. I think you're only limited by your skill set. Food prep, camping, bushcrafting, self-defense. You can use it for all of those things. And, and really, truly, honestly, guys, it's a hell of a knife. Would I carry it? You're damn right. I love it. Keith, brother, much love and appreciation for sending it. It's a badass knife. And y'all can tell right here. We put some use on it. I'm going to sharpen it up, strop it up, and get it back to key. Guys, listen, some final thoughts. Y'all get with tops. We want Leo on Blade Talk. I think it's important we do that. Now, listen, this is the most important thing of all. I'm Scab. You're not. Have a great week, man. I'm gone. Here's a little comparison of the Nomad EDC for size. I feel like I should sing you out or something. Do 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 do.